SCP-10 Callers of Control Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures The objects comprising SCP-10 are to be kept in numbered locked boxes at Site-19. They are not to be worn except by test subjects. SCP-10 are only to be removed from storage for testing. Description SCP-10 consists of a series of six apparently identical cast iron collars with numbered metal tags and one remote control. The control is SCP-10-1. The collars are SCP-10-2 through 10-7. The collars contain intricate electronic components and are powered by small 5mm diameter, 2mm thick, 100 volt batteries. These batteries are rechargeable. The remote is a heavy black box resembling an old style handheld radio transmitter receiver with primitive blue white cathode ray screen and a series of more than 100 unlabeled buttons as well as a frequency tuner. Through trial and error, the frequencies of all six currently found callers have been discovered. A label in Russian is stamped into the metal along with a logo consisting of workers building a pyramid. No official Russian corporation or government agency uses this logo or matches the words stamped into the metal. Placing the collar around the neck of a person and securing it allows one to control their every movement with the remote. It is also capable of producing an adrenal response and activating or deactivating the sympathetic nervous system. The most abnormal feature of the collars is the effect they have on the body morphology. They allow the user of the remote to reconfigure the shape of the victim to an extent that is apparently only limited by the knowledge of the programming language of the remote. Addendum 10-1 History SCP-10 was discovered in the basement of a lone man in the Midwestern United States after a local disappearance was connected to him. When the police raided the man's house, they found SCP-10, as well as several dead bodies. One of the bodies was identified to be the man. The others were several other missing persons, cause of death deemed to be mass suicide. However, there were signs of a significant struggle first. Addendum 10-2 Disassemble Experiment Test 1 SCP-10-2 taken apart piecewise, the parts labeled and several photographs taken, then reassembled. Result: After reassembly, SCP-10-2 continues to function. Test 2 SCP-10-8 constructed identically to SCP-10-2, but with the closest approximations available to the unreplicable components. Result. SCP-10-8 fails to function. Test 3. Unreplicable components from SCP-10-2 placed into proper locations on SCP-10-8. Result. SCP-10-2 ceases functioning with removal of components. SCP-10-8 begins functioning. Test 4. Components returned to SCP-10-2. Replicable components in SCP-10-2 replace randomly with replicas. Result: SCP-10-2 begins functioning with return of components. Changing replicable components for replicas does not significantly reduce functionality. Replacement of a damaged transistor decreased time from transmission to effect of SCP-10-2 response to commands entered in the remote by 12%. Addendum 10-3 SCP-10 has been demonstrated to work more effectively in creating unskilled labor than for any other task. The logo is apt. Dr. 